Welcome to Britannica International School Shanghai. Located in the heart of the city, Britannica International School Shanghai offers a full British curriculum, adapted and extended to meet the needs of international students. We are British owned and staffed by British qualified teachers delivering the very best of British education. These are the highest quality, fully trained British teachers selected for their excellence and experience. All teachers at Britannica are fully qualified in their specific subject areas. This ranges from our early years provision, which is two years of age, through to A-level, which is 17 and 18 years of age, where our students currently achieve the highest level of pass rates. In addition to the core curriculum, which is taught via the medium of English, Britannica International Shanghai recognises the importance of individual countries, nationalities and their identities. As a result, Britannica's unique native language programme currently offers native language lessons provided by qualified teachers in Mandarin, English, French, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Korean and Hebrew. Our purpose-built campus features a wide range of teaching facilities, including art and specialist teaching areas, junior and senior libraries and a fully equipped ICT suite. Being relatively small compared to some of the international schools in Shanghai, Britannica International School can guarantee each student has access to the very best educational opportunities. This means that each child is known by all in the school and each child has the opportunity to have the curriculum perfectly matched to their individual learning needs. Our vision has always been to balance a drive for the highest academic standards balanced with an inclusive approach for children of all backgrounds and interests. At Britannica International School Shanghai, I look to the superb teachers and support staff to continually offer the very best of British education for all of our children. At Britannica, we know that each child is special and you, as parents, have high aspirations for their happiness and future academic success. Britannica students will be the leaders of tomorrow, global citizens, and will attend the world's best universities. It is our aspiration to enable them to do that. Hello, my name is Elaine Fu. I'm the head of Mandarin here at Britannica. I joined the school in 2013 when the school opened. Uh, now it is my seventh year in the school. As a founding member of the Britannica staff, I'm proud to say that Mandarin has been a crucial part of the school's curriculum since its opening and it has remained so as the school has grown. Mandarin is a mandatory subject for students from early years up to Key Stage 3. It is also offered as an option for IGCSE and A-level subjects. In early years and primary school, children have daily Mandarin lessons to ensure they have frequent exposure to the Mandarin language. And in secondary school, students have four lessons a week. In addition to that, native Chinese speakers at school will also have the option to have in total seven lessons a week. Britannica is a truly international community. Mandarin learners here come from a variety of backgrounds and with different needs and expectations. It is therefore essential for us to design Mandarin curriculum to cater for a range of abilities and needs. Let's start with our non-native program. For non-native learners who study Mandarin as a foreign language at Britannica, our focus is to help them develop the ability to communicate effectively and cross-culturally. In our Mandarin lessons, students learn through interactive activities such as role plays, interviews, oral presentations to build their language skills through a communicative context. Our aim is to prepare our learners to be independent, confident, an accurate user of Mandarin. I would like to share the successful example, Zhang, a Korean student here at Britannica. Zhang joined year seven as a complete beginner to Mandarin. But after a few years studying Mandarin with us, he has become a very confident, fluent Mandarin speaker who is keen to communicate in Mandarin. In 2017, Zhang has volunteered to be the MC for our Chinese New Year celebration, making his announcement in Mandarin. It was a huge success. He was later very proud to tell me the positive feedbacks he has received. He said that all the Korean moms who come to watch the show said that he sounds like a native Chinese speaker. Last year in 2019, 
John has achieved an A in his IGCSE Mandarin exam. We are, of course, very proud of John, but not only because of his great exam result, but also for his progress in proficiency, his communication skills, and with the confidence he has acquired in Mandarin during his time with us. John returned to Korea after he completed his IGCSE exams. But Mandarin will be a language he continues to study. In our non-native Mandarin program, we also introduce Chinese culture to our non-native learners. It is done in lessons and through various cultural activities, such as traditional festival celebrations and school trips. This enables our learners to have a better understanding of Chinese culture and to increase their awareness of the cultural differences when communicating with Chinese people. For native speakers, learning Mandarin is more than learning just a language. As we know, one's native language plays an important role in the construction of one's personal, cultural and social identity. Our mother language holds the key to understanding and communicating our native culture. The Native Chinese program at Britannica is based on China's national curriculum for Chinese language and literature, but is adapted to suit the needs of students studying in an English-speaking school. We prepare our native Chinese learners with the skills needed to access, comprehend, and appreciate Chinese literature, as well as helping them understand the philosophy, history, and the traditions and the values of their native culture in order to help them shape their cultural identity and enhance their cultural confidence. In addition to the regular Mandarin first language curriculum, Mandarin is also offered as one of the options for the native language program for students in reception to Key Stage 3. This allows our Mandarin first language learners to have the choice of having up to seven lessons a week. In those additional lessons, students have the opportunity to study a selection of texts from Asian Chinese poems, classical Chinese literature, and for younger learners, stories and tales. This is in addition to our regular use of our textbook, so as to further increase their access to Chinese literature. This also enables our learners to develop a deeper understanding of the historical and cultural context of Chinese literature. Hi, I'm Eloise Phillips. I'm Head of English here at Britannica. At Britannica, our English curriculum is reflective of the British system with our use of Cambridge as an examining board. The student's English career at Britannica prepares them for two routes at IGCSE. They can either take English as a first language or English as a second language. In order to prepare them fully for either course at Key Stage 3, the curriculum is much more holistic. This means that they are exposed to skills that will be tested in both, um, in both exams. English as a first language as a title can seem limiting for some students, but it really isn't anything to be afraid about if you are a non-native speaker. Because in Key Stage 3, which is years 7, 8 and 9, the children are exposed to all range, um, to, to all of the skills that will be tested. So speaking, uh, listening, reading, writing, with the writing being analysis, creative writing and trans transactional writing. They are prepared to take English as a first language um, if, if they should wish to. Students do not have to choose which route they take until they're in year nine. So should they have joined in primary or in year seven, they will have been um, well exposed to all of the skills expected of them. In years seven, eight and nine, before they choose their options and the two GCSE routes are split, um, they are in classes very intentionally small classes that, can be tar that skills can be targeted for um, with a range of abilities. What this means is that children um, maybe that are underconfident with lower levels of English are exposed to students that also have higher levels of English to boost their confidence. In terms of reading and writing, that looks very different with English as a second language than it does with English as a first language. However, in Key Stage 3, both uh, sets of skills will be taught. In terms of writing, creative writing and transactional writing will be taught 
and in terms of reading, there is reading for high-level analysis as well as reading just for comprehension and for summary writing. We value the student as an individual here at Britannica. So the fact that we have intentionally very small classes means that we are able to individualise the curriculum. What this means is each teacher knows, your child knows the student very fully. And so they're aware of their needs, but also very highly aware of their strengths. So when it does come to choosing whether they would want to do first language or second language at IGCSE, the teacher will be able to guide you on that decision as well. Learners with very little English at the beginning of their career at Britannica have absolutely nothing to worry about. We are very, very lucky to have a highly specialised EAL support system in place here. Our EAL provision here at Britannica is divided into two programmes. So for those who have had very little exposure to, um, to English, whether that be academically or socially, they are able to enter a sheltered curriculum. What this means is they have intense English one-on-one -on -one support with an individual teacher. This one-on-one -on -one support helps them to grow in confidence and we do truly believe that confidence is key to language acquisition. The sheltered curriculum breaks English as a language down to the very, very basics and then from these basics builds the individual student up to a point where they feel confident enough to join the classroom with their peers. At this stage, the pupil will be assessed and if the teacher and the pupil themselves feels as though they are confident enough to move into the classroom alongside other students where the instruction will be in English, then they, uh, they will be assessed and they will be able to do that. At this point, the student moves into the second stage of um, programmes provided by our specialist EAL support. They have in-class support by a specialist EAL, English as an additional language, teacher. What this means is if at first they feel slightly underconfident or may feel as though they are not able to keep up with the class, the specialist teacher will be with them at all times and able to guide them through the lesson at maybe more of a slower pace. However, this stage is really important for the socialisation of the child, of the student. As here at Britannica, we are very diverse and have a huge range of languages spoken, but English is the unifying language, and therefore having English at a comfortable and academic level will enable them to progress further and further and further. As they move into in-class support, they will grow in confidence, which we have seen over and over again. This is really wonderful to witness, and as they grow in confidence, they get more active and become more active in the learning. So the eventual goal for language learners would be to move out of this EAL support entirely, whereas they began with the sheltered curriculum by themselves, moved into class support, and then eventually be able to succeed in that class by themselves. We're very lucky here at Britannica to be able to support this, as all teachers are trained to a very high British standard. Being able to support English as an additional language learners is a huge part of teacher training in Britain. What this means is that all teachers at Britannica are highly trained and highly skilled in this area. So once your child does move out of having in-class support and the sheltered curriculum, this does not mean that their lessons are not supported and that every single teacher is not individualising each lesson for your child. Each lesson and each activity within the lesson is highly, highly supported in order to help each child progress and succeed. At Britannica, student engagement is the ultimate measure of success for us. So what we are aiming, especially within English, is to have the children up and active in their learning. We use research methods like talk for writing in order to help us achieve this. Due to the small class sizes and personalised learning here at Britannica, which is highly scaffolded and highly supported, all students are able to make huge progress despite their previous levels of English. At Britannica International School Shanghai, 
All students follow the English national curriculum and therefore the vast majority of lessons are taught via the medium of English. However, being in Shanghai and in China, we truly recognise and value the acquisition of the Mandarin language and students learning Chinese culture. Today, I'm joined with Ms Eloise Phillips, our Head of English, and Ms Elaine Fu, our Head of Mandarin. So, Elaine, could you tell me, why did you choose to work at Britannica International School, Shanghai? Right, before joining Britannica, I was working in a well-established well international school in Shanghai, which is much bigger in size compared to Britannica. But then in 2013, I was invited to join the founding team of Britannica to set up and to lead the Mandarin program. Um, Britannica was new back then, of course, but I was really attracted by the idea and the vision of a school that is much smaller in size, but strongly connected community, um, in which the members, including teachers, students, and parents, know each other and cares about each other. In the, last, in the past few years that I worked in Britannica, I have closely witnessed the um, um, growth of a great many young and bright, talented children. I mean, not only just their progress in Mandarin, but their growth as young people. I think this is a unique, wonderful experience, and for that, I do think I made the right choice back then. Okay, lovely, thank you. And Ms. Phillips, why did you decide to teach at Britannica Shanghai? I think having taught in Britain to very large classes, and for a year in Shanghai also again to a very large class, what attracted me most to Britannica was the intentionally small nature of the classes, which really allows us to personalise our learning to each individual student. You get to know the student absolutely, very fully, and you are able to personalise your lessons and your teaching for their needs and strengths, which, um, which is something that really garners a really positive relationship with mm. the students, and they're able to do that with themselves as well. They're a very, very tight-knit group of students. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So, Ms. Phillips, obviously you were born in the UK, educated there through both primary and secondary school, and then went on to university in the UK. What does British curriculum mean to you, and what do you think it means to your students? I think that the British cur curriculum is renowned for its rigour, which I experienced as a student being taught, but also training in Britain and teaching, teaching there for three years. Um, I think that the curriculum is only getting more rigorous as, as time goes on. And so I think that's probably the most attractive thing about it. But for the students, although it is very rigorous, it's also very highly supported. So being able to succeed with the British curriculum is highly, highly achievable. Mm, okay. And uh, Ms Fu, you've got quite an interesting and unique educational background where you're obviously Shanghainese, coming from Shanghai but you then went overseas to decide to do your university course all in English. I mean, what, is, what does the British curriculum mean to you? And what do you think it means to your students? Um, recently becoming a parent, I think I start to looking at curriculum more from parents' perspective. As a Chinese parent myself, well, I am aware that British curriculum, British education is highly regarded among Chinese parents. I know many friends of mine and children of friends who are studying in UK or having had experience studying in UK. I think also there's an increasing number of Chinese students going to UK for further education yeah. every year. So I think for these students who are seeking a potential future study in UK, I mean taking a path with a school that offers British curriculum, authentic British curriculum from an early stage, is probably the best choice for them and prepare them best for their aim. Okay, thank you. As mentioned earlier, the acquisition of Chinese language at Britannica is one of our main goals. Elaine, could you tell us how a Chinese student achieves complete bilingualism while they're here at Britannica? Research has proven that mother language lives harmoniously with the acquisition of other languages, making it possible to develop bilingualism for Chinese speakers in an English-speaking school through our native Chinese program. As I previously mentioned, children from a native Chinese speaking background are grouped together to study Mandarin at Britannica. 
following a curriculum that is adapted from China's national curriculum of language and literature. It is adapted to suit the needs of um, children who are studying it in an English-speaking school. In addition to our regular Mandarin first language curriculum, Mandarin is also offered as one of the options for the native language program, which allows our native Chinese learners to have the choice of having up to seven lessons a week. During these additional lessons, children have the opportunity to study a range of a selection of texts, including ancient Chinese poems, um, classical Chinese literature and for younger learners, tales and stories, and these enabled students to have more access to Chinese literature and to deepen their understanding of the historical and cultural background of this Chinese literature. So Elaine, many of our parents, both Chinese and foreign, when they join the school, they're very interested in the end product in terms of examination results. Could you tell me a bit about the examination results in the Mandarin department, please? Um, at Britannica, we are very proud of the exam results of our students. They regularly achieve higher marks in the exams. Especially in 2019, we got a very imp impressive result that all of our students achieved A to A star, regardless of native or non-native program. Uh, some of them actually started as completely beginner to Mandarin when they joined with us. Um, one of our students, whose native language is English, has achieved a top mark for the exam of Mandarin as a foreign language. So that was, the, that was the top mark in GCSE for all students in China? It's for all the students in the world. All students in the world. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so we've just spoke about the successes in terms of student progress and examination results in the Mandarin department. Eloise, as Head of English, could you please tell me why you feel that specialised support in English is critical for the acquisition of the English language? Yeah, I mean, I think confidence is critical for the acquisition of the English language. Coming in as a non-native speaker can be terrifying, and any help that you can have with combating that fear is absolutely essential. Here, we're very, very lucky to have a really specialised department with English as an additional language. We have two programs that work fantastically together with that. So if you have a low level of English or very little to no exposure to the language, then there is a sheltered curriculum. So that fear of going into a class and not understanding what on earth is going on is completely removed from the outset and you have the specialised one-on-one -on -one support with a teacher that you get to know really, really well. Um, once you feel confident in moving away from that and back into the classroom, you can have in-class support. That in-class support is essential in order to help you feel confident to take part in the lesson, but also to socialise with your peers. Once the student feels able to socialise with their peers, picking up the language and the colloquialisms within the language becomes much easier and feels much, much more natural. So Elaine, you, you previously mentioned that you're, you're now a parent. Congratulations. Thank you. Could you tell me, what, what's your honest opinion and preference on your children's education and does Britannica fit into that plan? Having worked in Britannica for the last seven years, I think I'm confident to say that as a parent, Britannica is that school that I wish my children could attend, although they're still of preschool age at the moment. It is such a small but yet a warm and welcoming community where your children can thrive and achieve their ambitions. Lovely, good. Well we hope to see them here soon. Oh, thank you. Um, Eloise, obviously you, you've joined us this year as Head of English. Um, could you tell us what's, what's, what are the main differences between Britannica and your previous school um, back in the UK? I think in terms of the rigour of the curriculum there's very little change but you see much more progress here at Britannica with the students because the learning can be so individualised. Having uh, such small classes that each teacher can work with each child as an individual means that they progress at a huge rate very, very quickly. So at home, what that would usually take maybe a year, maybe a couple of years to see that level of progress. Here, that's achievable within a couple of terms. Mm. And you've mentioned a couple of times that 
small class sizes and personalised approach is really important. I fully agree. I think that's something that Britannica will always strive to achieve. In terms of your, your current classes, so let's look at your year 11 GCSE class. How many students do you have in the class now compared to when you had the same equivalent class in the UK? So I have two students with first language at GCSE here, here at Britannica. Here at Britannica and at home I had 28. 20, so you've got a 14 times smaller class here. <laughs> okay, um, we do offer a level English here, English literature and language. Um, how many students have you got in the class? One, One at the student. minute. Yeah. And back to the UK? Back in the UK, the, it depends. So when I was at college, my class was divided into three and each class had between 20 and 30 students within it. Uh, the school that I taught at, there were 15, 16 within each class. I mean, clearly the statistics show there's going to be more contact when the class sizes are smaller. Do you feel it's beneficial to have class sizes that small? Yeah, highly beneficial because you're able to have... The discussion is still there. I think the only thing remo that is removed, arguably, is the discussion with the class, but you're able to have that discussion with that individual student at a highly academic level. So you can garner your questions, your discussion, your talking points to that one child and that one child's um, potential ability. So there's, no, there's nothing restricting that child. It's, it's tutorship, essentially. Yeah, definitely. And Elaine, looking at Mandarin, if we look at our A-level programme in Mandarin, I know that in the UK, as Eloise mentioned, the classes can regularly be 20, 30 students. How many students have you currently got in your A-level Mandarin classes? I have two Year 13 students studying A-level this year. Okay. And if you look at our current Year 11 cohort? We have two in the native Mandarin um, program and another two in the Mandarin as a non-native program. Okay. So out of those four students that we currently have in Year 11, um, have you got any indication on whether or not they will continue to study A-level Mandarin, even although two are non-native and two are native, do you know that if they are going to continue with the study? Uh, definitely. I'm glad to know that uh, many of them have already indicated their um, choice of doing Mandarin at their A-level um, stage. Wonderful. So I'm looking forward to welcoming them to my A-level classes. Wonderful. I would like to thank you all for listening to our presentation and discussions today. Hopefully you can see that Britannica International School Shanghai offers something unique in the city, where we manage to combine a blend of the English curriculum with a unique Mandarin language programme. We hope to see you, your family and your children at our Gubei campus at Britannica International School Shanghai in the very near future. Thank you.